What is up, people? Van from the Vanverse Gaming Channel here, bringing another video on Celeste Crown the Magister. Today's video is going to be a very basic class guide. Now, I've already done a video about the perfect party where I kind of go into some details about combining the different classes and why they're great and why they work well. I'm going to do in-depth guides of each class, break down the subclasses, and get into a crazy amount of detail. But this video is just really a quick beginner's guide to classes to kind of go over for all the people who've never played D&D 5th edition or just aren't that familiar with the different classes, what makes each one special and why you might want to pick that class for your party. I created one of these in the past, but since the new DLC has come out and there's been some other DLCs in the middle, I wanted to make a guide that puts them all into the same video. So with that being said, let's begin. So first up, let's just kind of talk about the circles, right? These yellow circles are Primal Calling DLC. If you don't own the Primal Calling DLC, you will not have access to these two different classes. The red is the Inner Strength DLC. If you do not own the Inner Strength DLC, you will not have access to these three classes. And then the Sorcerer you have access to is a free download a while back, so no big deal here. So just keep that in mind. We're going to go over all of them, but if you don't have access to one of these classes in your game, it's because you got to purchase the DLC. So first, we're just going to go in alphabetical order. We're going to talk about the Barbarian. So what makes a Barbarian special are really two things. One, they don't need to wear armor. So if you have a very good dexterity and a very good constitution, you can actually get a very good AC without wearing armor. You can wear medium armor and you can have a shield on, but it might behoove you not to do that because some of the how their rage works you might want to think about wearing it not wearing it what's the better ac you can gain if you put a lot of your points into constitution and strength really the barbarian is going to be your straight up damage dealer um, they their main spiel is they have a lot of constitution so they have a lot of hit points and they like to rage which allows them to resist damage so they're very unique in they're one of they're the only class that can basically have resistances to basic damage. And so that's what makes them a great tank class and even a great melee fighter class. So then going to the bard. So in video games and everything, the bard is always portrayed as this, you know, minstrel who is a support character, jack of all trades, master of none, etc., etc. That's kind of how they are in D&D. Their big thing is they do this inspiration where they tend to buff your other characters. They also, depending on which subclass you pick, can debuff something. So they're very good in a party. They also do get jack-of-all-trade traits. So when it comes to a skills-based, they can really fill in a lot of different skills and proficiencies that can help out as well. Their unique bard spells are not that fantastic. There's very few bard-only spells that make them good from that point. Um, but they do, depending on which class you pick, can really dive into some of the other, the other classes. So like if you pick a lore bard, you can start grabbing spells from other classes, which makes them kind of fun to play. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the bard. They're too support for me. So if there's, you know, there's not a lot they do, and I feel like there might be other party members that could do a better job. But that's kind of the role of the bard, to inspire the, the, your team and to kind of help out where they can. So then we get into the cleric. So the cleric by far has the most subclass options. It's probably one of the strongest classes in all of D&D. They pretty much can fit every role. And to be quite honest, I mean, they can be a melee, they can be ranged, they can be a caster, they can be... Uh, healer i mean they're just all around a strong class their big thing is they have a lot of healing spells and healing related things they do have some channeling ability where they're going to be using a lot of their channeled uh, you know concentration spells um, but they can get tanky with heavy armor they can dabble into spell schools that are outside of the healing realm um, so all in all being able to wield you know weapons wear heavy armor and shields uh, depend on your subclass wearing medium armor and shields they're just an all-around solid class i mean their their main people think of a cleric as a healer being the healer for the party 
But depending on which subclass you pick, they could very well fit in a tank role or a support role. Um, they just kind of do it all. But most people pick them for the healer side of the party. So then we'll go to the Druid. So the Druid, to me, what makes them special is they can transform into animals, um, bears, wolves, that kind of thing. That's really their big thing. They're nature-related, so most of their spells are kind of a combination between damage and healing. Uh, they probably have the most amount of concentration spells of any other class. So really, you know, maintaining a concentration spell while doing other things is kind of what they do the best. Um, but for the most part, they're going to be similar to a cleric where they're going to fill your healer role. Outside of that, they don't do enough damage to fill some of the other roles. But if you want to have a creature, a uh, character that can turn into different creatures, uh, they're a lot of fun for that and also still kind of be the healer of the party. So then the fighter, I mean, the fighter is the epitome of every class, you know, the warrior that's in full heavy armor, plate armor with a two handed sword or full heavy plate armor with a sword and shield. You know, they get some abilities like Action Surge where they get to do their action twice. So, you know, when you get to higher levels, you can make upwards of, you know, six attacks and so on. Um, they can get a temporary heal to themselves. They can wear any armor and, and use any weapon in the game. So, I mean, ultimately, if you're new to D&D, clerics and fighters are probably some of the best to just jump into. They're just real simple. And to me, the fighter is a really strong class i mean they do a good job in being versatile they're just not exciting pretty much every single turn you're gonna attack that's it you're not gonna have any spells nothing you're just gonna attack that's your job so if you're looking for something that's a little bit more dynamic probably not the best class if you're looking for something that's easy you can just go right in and they do a good job that's a good class to pick all right so moving over to the monk so the monk is one of these classes where they can fit several roles. For the most part, they're going to be your melee DPS. Um, they do have the ability to heal depending on the subclass. They do have the ability to do a tank depending on the subclass. Um, but for the most part, what, what defines them is they don't use weapons except for like short swords. Um, so monk weapons. But they get an unarmored attack. So most classes need to have in their, they need to have a weapon in their offhand. And they can do two weapon fighting where they can attack with their action and then do a bonus attack with their bonus action, but it has to be weapons. The monk's the only class that can bonus action and punch something in the face. Um, it starts out pretty low to D4, but then it works its way, way up. And then they also get to add in some really cool abilities with key points. This is what makes them unique. You can spend your key points to do different things depending on your subclass, um, which can make for a lot of fun. In a game like Salasta, monks are actually more powerful than tabletop because they require short rest to regain their key points. And at low levels, you don't get a lot of key points because you get one key point per level. So at lower levels, they're kind of boring. They run out of key real quick. Um, but when you get up into higher levels and you can short rest and get their key points back, they actually can be pretty devastating with some of their attacks where they can stunning strike and that type of stuff. But that's what makes them unique. They don't wear armor, so their dexterity and wisdom go towards their armor class. They get an offhand attack for free with their fist, and they um, they tend to stun and do some cool things with key points. All right, so the paladin. So the paladin is, you know, if you haven't played any kind of game or know anything about paladins, it's a great mix between a fighter and a cleric. So they are a fighter who wears heavy armor, can wear, you know, shields and all of that. But then they dabble more in the cleric type spells so they can buff themselves a little bit, do some little things like that. But they're, the, the niche or the what makes a paladin special is really two main things. One, they get the ability to lay on hands. This is very big in all of D&D and most video games where they can heal themselves or other members by doing lay on hands once per long rest. They're always like immune to disease. They get... Uh, very similar to a cleric, they get kind of this whole where they can talk to their god and get some some channel divinity going on. But really why people love the paladin the most is their ability to use their smite. So paladins can take a spell slot instead of casting spells when they make an attack. They can burn a smite and they can actually do some additional radiant damage on that attack. So depending on the level you are and how much your smite does 
you can really do some crazy damage with crits using your smites. And so that's what makes a paladin pretty amazing, is as long as they have smites to use, they're pretty strong. But they do have to gain back those smites on a long rest because it uses spell slots. So that's what kind of defines a class. So if you're looking for the Holy Avenger who can smite its enemies and wear heavy armor, that's why I think a paladin would be fun to play in your party. The Ranger. So similar that the Paladin is kind of a hybrid between a Fighter Cleric, I would say the Ranger is a good combination between a Fighter and a Druid. So they have some of the spells out of the Druid world where they can cast. They're really good on, you know, in Solasta, trying to like forge food so you can rest when you're going on the world map. But what really makes them special is the ability to cast Hunter's Mark and to have favorite enemies and that kind of thing. So you can wear you know, most armor, you can wear medium armor, etc. You can dual wield, you can use two-handers, you can use bows. But what makes them special is the ability to use that hunter's mark and keep it maintained to, to add damage. And then, of course, you know, you can pick favorite an enemies where you can do damage against them. But overall, depending on what subclass you pick, if you're looking for that Legolas, you know, range fighter with a bow, they could fit that, but so can fighters. They just add a little bit more flavor because they can dabble into some of the druid spells that can be beneficial depending on how you like your play style. I actually prefer to play a two weapon fighter for the uh, for the ranger. I'm sorry, I actually prefer to play the ranger as a two weapon fighter and not do one hander shield or two hander. Okay, so the rogue. So what makes the rogue very unique is they are the only class that can sneak attack. They're really good with picking locks and all that. So if you're looking for your kind of what they call them, you know, the guy who's going to unlock all of your all your chests and disarm all of your traps, that's kind of where they, they shine. But really what makes them special is their sneak attack. So every, depending on what level you are, you get to add an additional D6 to your sneak attack. So at level two, you get one D6, as you can see, one D6 every two levels. So at level three, I think, is when you go to 2d6, and then at five, it goes to 3d6. And so there's certain stipulations to get your sneak attack damage off, but they're really fun when you crit with a sneak attack because you can do some pretty good burst damage. So that's really what makes a rogue special is if you're looking for a class that easily can unlock doors and easily can disarm traps and also has some pretty cool damage with their sneak attack ability, this can be a fun sub, uh, some fun class for you to play. All right, so the Sorcerer. So what makes the Sorcerer unique is they're the only caster that has the ability to manipulate their spells. So they don't get a ton of spells. They're not like a wizard where they have a huge spell list because all their spells are innate. But the spells they do get are very similar to a wizard. They just, can only, they just don't have as many to prepare. So once they kind of pick what spells they're going to use, they then can use this meta magic to do different things to their spells by spending their sorcery points. So they're really good at being able to like twin a spell. So, you know, if you wanna cast a, a spell that targets one person, like hold person, you could twin it and hold person on two creatures. Or you could do some other things where you can ex extend how long the duration of a spell is and that kind of thing. So that's what makes them special is utilizing these sork points in order to manipulate the magic that you're casting. And in addition, there's a really cool way where you can sacrifice some of your Sork points to gain spell slots back and sacrifice spell slots to get more Sork points. So it's kind of a fun class to play when you're trying to do that. All right, so now we're going to go into the Warlock. So what makes the Warlock special is they don't get a bunch of spells. They get to memorize a couple spells, but ultimately they can only cast two spells every time before a short rest every other caster requires a long rest to get their spells back the warlock requires a short rest so where a warlock gets a lot of its special abilities is through their invocations which are these abilities that kind of offset their lack of spell choices and the fact that you know they get they get to change their pact so they can choose to be a pact of a chain a pact of a of a tome or a pact of the blade and that kind of changes their play style of what kind of warlock you're going to be. So if you want to be packed to the blade, then you can get a melee weapon and get, you know, some benefits to using melee. Packed to the chain, you get a little pet that helps you out. But ultimately what makes a warlock special is 
they get their stuff back on short rest, but they only can they can only cast two spells before they have to take a short rest. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for a party that you like to get through things with short rest, and you're looking for a character that most of its damage is coming from its cantrips, um, but they can get a lot of their cool abilities back on a short rest, maybe a Warlock's for you. But ultimately, the Warlock's best job is to be an Eldritch Blast monster and just manipulate your Eldritch Blast to push things away and do some other stuff like that. All right, so last but not least is the Wizard. There's a couple of reasons why the Wizard is unique and special in the game. One, they're the only class that can cast a ritual spell without actually preparing the spell. So you can have 10 spells in your spell book. You can only prepare so many. But all the other classes that can cast some of these ritual spells, they at least have to have it prepared. Where a wizard can prepare six or seven other spells and still be able to cast any of their ritual spells. So that's what makes them very unique. On top of it, most of their spell choices are different than the other classes. Um, so they get some really good spell options. And ultimately, they're probably the best in the party when it comes to really changing the dynamic. Their AoEs and their ability to have so many different spells available is great. Like a sorcerer, once you pick your four or five spells, that's it. You don't get to pick more. A wizard, you could know 12 or 13 spells, but can only prepare five or six at a time. But you can long rest and, and switch out what spells you have prepared to kind of, you know, more structure it to the fight that's about to come. So I think that's what makes wizards unique. They're the only ones that can really cast like identify um, as a ritual. They have a spell book, which is kind of interesting because you can add scrolls to it and you can build on it where the other casters, you can't do that. And so that's what makes them unique. So hopefully just listening to this video, you kind of get an idea of what the, the niche of each of the different classes are and what makes them special and helps you to figure out what kind of play style you want. And then after this video, watch my video on how to build a perfect party. And then you can start to see how you can synergize these classes together to make your four character party that you're going to go into Solasta with and have a good time. So this is Van from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Appreciate you guys watching. Cheers and peace out.